In honor of International Children's Book Day on April 2nd, we are honored to have the opportunity to interview change-making author Tasha Spillett about her graphic novel series, Surviving the City. Tasha's Cree and Trinidadian bloodlines bring her strength and power to fight against colonialism through the work she does. Tasha is a celebrated educator, poet, author, speaker, an emerging scholar who is currently working toward her PhD in education through the University of Saskatchewan, the same university where she holds a Vanier Canada Award. Her research focuses on amplifying the voices of Indigenous women, girls, and Two-Spirit people to bring justice for missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and Two-Spirit people. She is a dedicated advocate for the protection of Indigenous women and girls, as well as land and water defense, and an active member of the Manitoba's Indigenous community. As an educator, Tasha creates inclusive and culturally responsive learning environments for students and is involved in the development of Indigenous education policies and curriculum. As well, she has served as a mentor in the Sister Circle, an after-school program for Indigenous girls. Tasha played an instrumental role in the formation of the annual Education Days for the Manitoba Festival, an event where youth, Indigenous leaders, and cultural knowledge keepers from the community join together to share, learn, and celebrate Indigenous ways of being. Tasha was previously the chair of the Miss Manitoba Youth Ambassador, which gathers in honour of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. All right. Thank you so much, Tasha, for joining us today in honor of International Children's Book Day, which was yesterday, April 2nd. We're going to begin our time today with a personal land acknowledgement. I would like to begin our time together today by acknowledging that my ancestors were settlers of British, Irish, German, and French descent to Turtle Island, also known as Canada, and therefore I feel it necessary to educate myself about this land in which I live and work, land which Indigenous peoples have been the stewards of long before my ancestors arrived. The land on which I currently reside is in Thorold, Ontario, Canada, and is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Ojibwe Chippewa peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. The principles of these agreements were reaffirmed in 1764 with the Crown through the Covenant Chain of Friendship and the Treaty of Niagara. Canada was built on these nation-to-nation -nation agreements. We must recognize that a mutually respectful relationship between these nations is necessary for reconciliation to happen. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, and acknowledging reminds us that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendship of Indigenous peoples. It is also an important reminder that colonization has resulted in loss of land, resources, culture, and life within many Indigenous communities. We must recognize and thank Indigenous peoples for their stewardship of the lands on which we live, to also act as stewards of this land, protecting it and caring for it the way it protects and cares for us, and to advocate for First Nations reserve lands to be just as cared for by Canada as the land settlers inhabit. Thus, we must be committed to reconciliation efforts through continuing to educate ourselves about Indigenous issues, advocating for change, and finding ways to actively involve ourselves in the pursuit of becoming better ancestors. So thank you once again to change-making author Tasha Spillett for joining us today to discuss her graphic, graphic novel series, Surviving the City. Um, and also we will be highlighting some of those important themes within Indigenous communities and themes of advocating for positive change. So thank you so much, Tasha. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Excellent, thank you, Tasha. Um, so we'll, we'll start off just by, um, I'm curious to know what life experiences really motivated you to write books, which focus on issues within Indigenous communities. 
So my entrance into um, publishing books is a little bit um, out of the ordinary, I would think, you know, because I was shoulder tapped to write this first graphic novel series. So I didn't pursue um, being a published author in this way, but local um, editors at High Water Press here in Winnipeg uh, kind of just approached me and were like, Tasha, I really want you to write for us. You can write anything you want. And so with that kind of open arena and open invitation, I thought, you know, like, what, 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 what do I want to write? And I truly believe that we are all experts in our own experiences. And if I were to write a story, it had to be a story that I felt firmly rooted within. And so as an urban Indigenous woman, I, I really wanted to write a story that reflected that particular experience. And then also at the time, uh, when I was sheltered to have to write this series, I was teaching grade seven and eight in, at a inner city school here in Winnipeg. And, you know, um, I really saw the great impact that author, Cree author David Robertson's graphic novels had on my students. And just the way that they um, ate up the content in his graphic novels and connected so deeply with the characters. I, I wanted to contribute, contribute to that important work of helping young Indigenous folks see themselves and their communities, their families reflected back to them in dignified ways on the page. So I wrote Surviving the City uh, and in, in my mind it was solely the purpose was to walk beside these students as they navigate the world that they're in and the skin that they're in. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tasha. Um, that actually kind of leads into um, the next question here. And I think you answered some components of it um, there, but uh, which voices do you want to amplify through your books and who inspires your writing? Mm -hmm. So um, the voices that I, that I hope to amplify through the stories that I tell are definitely the, the voices of um, of Indigenous women, of women of color, of urban Indigenous folks. Um, like I said, I, you know, the only experience that I have is my own. Uh, and so I can do the work to support the stories of others, but it is um, my responsibility to make sure that the voices that, that I'm, I, I'm tied to get uplifted in, in different types of storytelling. And uh, when I wrote these graphic novels, my inspiration was the students that I was working with that, and their families and the communities that I was working within. And that's still the case, but um, like you'll see in the background of Janice's, uh, Janice's beautiful background there is my picture book, I Sing You Down From the Stars. And that is testament to my more personal um, inspiration, which is my daughter, Isabella Gijigoyavik. And um, you know, I always say that I, I write to, you know, write into existence worlds that are worthy of my daughter, worlds that she can live free and joyfully within. And so um, that's definitely my personal inspiration is, is my little girl. Oh, I love that, Tasha. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing how, you know, our, our children can really be those inspirations. And, and I, I, you know, I love uh, um, all of your work that, that you've done here, just, you know, so inspiring to all of us. Um, when we are looking at your, your graphic novels here, which are amazing, by the way, and I've read them quite a few times <laughs> inside and out. Um, so Surviving the City Volume uh, 1 here. Um, it really focuses on amplifying the, the, the topic of uh, the missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit peoples. Uh, well, Volume 2 uh, really focuses uh, predominantly on two-spirit identity. How would you respond to educators uh, who argue that the children are not ready to learn about these topics yet? I had, it's funny you bring that up, I had a very unfortunate experience of, you know, being disinvited um, to a school division. I was previously invited by a teacher, and then when she kind of was finalizing it with her administrator, um, they went ahead and disinvited me from sharing about this graphic novel series under the argument um, that you just mentioned, that the students wouldn't be ready for the topics um, that are included in the graphic novel series. And, you know, it was uh, so 
to be honest, so sad for me because, you know, uh, we know that young people are already contending with these topics. We know that young people are experiencing things themselves, watching their peers experience things, having experiencing things in the fa- and their families. They watch it, you know, curated for them on their phones each and every day. And so when we don't, when we don't offer them supports and love and guidance, then we're abandoning them to contend with these things on their own. And I think that that is such a a failure that that is a failure of educators. And I include myself as an educator and as adults who are entrusted with, you know, bringing up whole and well uh, people. And so I would just encourage them to, you know, um, really think and separate what am I personally uncomfortable with um, versus what what young people um, can kind of quote unquote handle. Because, you know, the reality is, is they, they um, you know, they see these things, they understand them. And, uh, and it's up to us to kind of guide them around, around things so that they have the best information, the most accurate information, the best vocabulary. And, you know, when I think back to my own time as a high school student, um, you know, young people today are leaps and bounds ahead of, you know, the quality of information, the rich language, the, you know, um, the empathetic belonging that they create for their peers than, than I had. And I think that that's really reflective of the work that educators have done to have these important conversations in the classroom and include diverse uh, stories uh, like, like the ones that I've created. Thank you, Tasha. We agree 100%. And we are just so thankful to have authors like you who are sharing their voices and sharing their stories so that all students can have books available to see themselves reflected in. And that's really what, you know, Chapters for Change is striving for is to, you know, connect with within different educational institutions. We have some partnerships Um, with different school boards in order to push for that type of reading material and education for educators so that they can create communities within their schools that are inclusive and safe for all students. So thank you so much. It's great to see, you know, another, in your case, an author and an educator advocating for that. And speaking of creating communities, um, your books focus deeply on the importance of a strong sense of community in order for people to feel a sense of belonging um, and connection. Can you talk a little bit about uh, community for you and how community and ceremony play an important part in your life? Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I wouldn't be who I I am without the, without the community and belonging that I feel to the community that I come from and you know like I was raised to understand that we don't do like nothing we do uh in our lives is um done alone you know it's really done with the the loving hands and the support and the love of the communities that we come from and so you know the characters in the graphic novels are you know, creating a sense of community with their own friend friendship group, and also reaching for the community that they that they um, that they need to support who they are in the development of their own personal identities. And uh, you know, I feel like that's one of the strongest protective factors that we can offer young people is a strong sense of community. And when I think about raising my daughter, you know, my daughter. Um, my daughter calls like many of our friends, aunt and uncle, even if they're not blood related to us. And that's the work that her dad and I have done to create these strong relationships so that she can be nurtured by far more people than him and I, because the reality is, is, you know, we're not going to be with our kids uh, each and every day, a hundred percent of the time. And there, you know, it is, it is necessary to have trusted adults in our community who we take as family to support in the in the raising of our children. Thank you so much, Tasha. And I wanted to touch on, on another piece here. I think we talked about it a little bit already, but um, 
about the impact of, of your books and, you know, really hoping that more educational institutions will be adding your books to their libraries and won't be canceling talks. We'll be, you know, having you for, for those talks that are so important to have in order for, for change to occur. So how do you hope that your books, I know you have um, these two and there's a third volume on the way, correct? Yeah, there's a third volume. I just finished final edits uh, for that one. And it's off to the illustrator, the same illustrator, uh, Natasha Donovan. And so that one will be out sometime late 2022, early 2023. Oh, awesome. We're, we're going to be so excited to, to see that. And um, how are you hoping that, that your books will instill positive change within Turtle Island? Mm -hmm. So two things that I hope for, you know, young Indigenous folks, it's to, you know, help make those connections between the things that, you know, the tougher things that our families contend with and the history of, of what's known as this country. Um, so that they all, that they don't place blame on the people that love it, they love and love them. That they know that are the traumas, the intergenerational traumas that exist in our family, families, um, are rooted in something beyond our cultural structures, our families, and it doesn't belong to us. You know, I think that's a, one of the saddest things to for young people to ingest that. You know, we are just intrinsically flawed people. That you know, uh, that's something that was really important for me in writing these in these graphic novels is to you know put little, I guess you know, bread a breadcrumb trail. So that they can follow it and really trace back the the catalyst that you know when the bomb went off colonialism was a bomb that went off across across these lands and the impacts are still being felt today but our families are heavily steeped in love and dignity and respect um, and i think that that's one of the important things but also for non-indigenous children and educators and families to also relearn to see Indigenous folks in, in beautiful and dignified ways has been so important to me. At first I wrote for particularly uh, Indigenous readers, but then I realized that there's, you know, that there is an undoing of a narrative that happens when non-Indigenous readers consume this content as well. I agree 100%. And let me just say, I, I've read both of your books with my 11 year old son. And the topics within these books are definitely, you know, acceptable and needed for, for children to read, and they are ready for these topics. And it, it helps to prepare our children to educate our children, like you said, about um, the true history, right, of, of uh, Turtle Island and how the traumas have continued and how we can then look at ways that we can, you know, make positive changes to work toward reconciliation. So, yeah, definitely, I, I am a huge advocate for everybody reading these books. Um, and I just wanted to, you had put a post on Facebook yesterday which really resonated with me. And I'm just gonna read part of that quote um, here and, and just explain a bit why, why it really touched me. So you, you had um, mentioned that you're getting, you know, more people wanting to have you come and speak in person and how sometimes there aren't things in place for your daughter to be able to attend with you easily. And, you know, as a parent, I, I can feel, you know, the difficulty and struggle when there's barriers in place where our children aren't fully, um, you know, accepted as part of, you know, the package. So um, I'm just going to read here. This is what you had posted to Facebook. I am a mother first. My daughter guides and shapes my work. There is no me without her. It's just important to remember to center children in the work that we do. And I, I want to say like that, that speaks to, to you as a wonderful mother, but also as a wonderful educator and advocate 
that we must center all of our children. And one way to do that is by educating about these important topics so that once again, all children can feel included and safe within the communities that they live and within the schools that they're attending. And yeah, I just wanna thank you so much, Tasha, um, for joining us today. And is there anything else that you wanted to share um, before we close about any upcoming, I know you spoke about the one book, but any other exciting things that are happening? So I have um, the third and final volume of the Surviving the City series. And then I have two more picture books. One, um, it's called Beautiful You, Beautiful Me. And it's about a diverse family. I'm really excited about that one because I, uh, the, the character is named for my daughter. So I think that that will be fun for her. Uh, and then I have another picture book that uh, is, will come out a little bit later down the line. Um, but I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited. Um, you know, when I, when I entered the world of picture books, I really felt like I found my people. Maybe it's a stage of life that I'm in now uh, with the, as a mother of a young child. But I, you know, um, picture books are just such beautiful and rich ways to grow worlds and make connections. And so I'm really excited about the, the next two that are coming out. Well, we're extremely excited as well to, to get our hands on copies of those. And yeah, I just want to thank you again so, so much for joining us um, in honor of International Children's Book Day um, and to really highlight the importance of the work that you're doing. And yeah, thank you so, so much. Thank you both for the time and for all the work that you do. Oh, thank you so much, Tasha. If you don't want to miss any of our upcoming videos, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below as well as the notifications. And you can also visit our website, chaptersforchange.com, for educational resources and to see what we're up to. See you soon!